Hi guys, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. So today I have my book expo and book con haul for you guys. All these books that I'm telling you guys about are books that I received for free. I received them because you know, arc drops and things like that. I'm gonna be reserving two books until the very end that I was really, really excited for and that I was super stoked to have received. I'm going to be doing this from telling you guys about the finished copies I received first, then the books as they come out in chronological order through months. I got this idea from Julie over at Pages and Pens who I became friends with over BookCon and Book Expo and oh my God, I love them so much. Julie is just, ah. Uh, Oh god, I miss her and I wish I could just give her a gigantic hug right now. So Julie, if you're watching this, virtual hug sending to you mentally, okay? I got to meet Rick Riordan and that was phenomenal. I'm such a huge fan of Uncle Rick. I have been reading his series for years. I love the Percy Jackson The Olympian series. I love the Heroes of Olympus series. And I'm currently a co-host for the Reading Ridden Read Along that is going on. This month we are reading Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and then each month going forward we will read another one of the books in order of the series that Rick has put out. But I got to meet him. I waited in line. I got The Trials of Apollo which is already out but I got it in paperback because that's what he had and I got it signed by him and oh my God, it was just so cool. I love him so much and he was just awesome to meet. There was actually one day where I was just walking with Mel from Mel to the Annie and she was like, oh, isn't that Rick Reardon? And I turned and we literally crossed paths and I looked at him and I was like, hi in a weird creepy whisper and I was like great <laughs> nice job and then I also got a hardcover of The Dreaming Tree which has to do it's like a thriller and it's about a full body transplant which sounds really messed up and creepy and cool I got to also meet the author who was there and this was over at Blackstone Publishing and they were really awesome I also was lucky enough that the line was pretty short on Friday, the last day of BEA, and I got my hands on I'll Never Tell. This has been on my radar for a while. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of like mystery thrillers, but this has a summer camp setting to it, and I love mysteries set at a summer camp, especially when the adults are returning later on in life. It's just, oh my god, I love it. I got Mooncakes. So this is about a teen witch who works in her grandmother's bookstore and she ends up falling in love with a werewolf and it's just super cute and super sweet. I didn't actually know much about this but everyone was like freaking out about it and I was like you know what I'm gonna try and get it and I love the art style in it. It's gorgeous and it has little bits and pieces that are just done in color which I really love. This comes out in October of 2019 just that you guys know. I also got a copy of Pilu in the Woods which is already out I believe. I believe this just recently came out but I had a couple friends who read this online and it seemed just super super cute and I'm excited to read. I don't really know much about this one but I have I just know that I have friends who have read it. They also gave me a copy of Hex Vet which is about these two veterinarians that work in a supernatural vet place so they look after mythical creatures and it's just really cute and short and it's very colorful and pretty and then i also got this other one called super sexy fun times which follows four different superhero super villains and their relationships outside of you know saving or destroying the world and it's not suitable for work i was did not did not realize we'd get some intense peens in here. So that surprised me. The main reason why I went over to this booth was because I saw a copy of Buffy, the graphic novel, and I knew I had to get my hands on this because I adore Buffy so much. So I have this. And then they were giving out finished copies of Moonstruck, which I have also seen around a lot. And then I also have the Avant-Garde, which I didn't know too much about, but Jay over the Orbit Bookworm actually just read the Avant-Garde. And so now I'm really stoked to read this because the author was like, oh, do you like Hayaku? And I was like, yeah, I do. And they were like, okay, well, here you should read this. It's about a girl who kind of wants to get out of her whole athletic box that she's been put in when she goes off to school. But when she gets to this college, she kind of gets recruited to join this basketball team and it's, it's cute. 
Those are the graphic novels and the finished copies that I have received. I am going to start with the June releases, actually. I have one June release. It came out this week, and that is When We Were Lost. This is about a group of teens who are on a flight with their class, and the plane crashes, and only a few of them survive, and so it's a survivalist story, and I'm so into it. So this came out on June 4th. The next three books we have are July releases. We have The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. Well, I don't know too much about this, just that it's very crow-based. It has to do with this group of people who are now tasked with helping the prince who has just recently faked his death. And I got this because Fierce Reeves was doing a buy a book, get a free arc. So that's how I got this. I was not part of the whole crazy rush to get one of these during BookCon because that's not what I was really into. But this comes out in July. We also have Never Have I Ever, which is a thriller that I've had my eye on. I didn't, I didn't know I was gonna have deckled edges, but you know, you win some, you lose some. And then the most exciting book that I got, not the most exciting, but one of the most exciting books that I got that I knew I had to get was Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I have been such a fan of Riley Sager for a while now. I listened to his first two books on audio and adored them. I even was lucky enough to meet Riley Sager, so I actually have this book all signed. And on the day that I got this signed, he said that my lipstick matched the book cover, and I was like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Follows a young woman whose new job Apartment sitting in one of New York's oldest and most glamorous buildings may cost more than it pays. So I don't know. I don't. I just love Riley Sager, and I found that as he publishes, like each book that he's published gets better and better each one. So I know it's just going to be phenomenal. So now we have the August releases. So first off, I managed to get The Nanny, which once again a thriller. Honestly, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm just going to tell you guys the truth right now. If it's a thriller. I know very little about it. It's just something that I've read previously. It intrigued me and when I saw it at Book Con or Book Expo and it was there, I grabbed it. I didn't really look at the blurb or anything because I don't like to go into them knowing anything because I think that sometimes it can give stuff away. So you know what guys, I'm sorry. If you want to know more about The Nanny, it is by Gilly Macmillan. Next we have Swipe Right for the Murder. And once again, you know, murder, mysteries, those kind of things. If, if that's what there is, I will take it. I will read it. So it says in the back, a hookup turned deadly, hunted by the FBI, targeted by a murderous cult, accused of cyber terrorism, increasingly irritated texts from friends, eye contact with the good looking guy on the train. Aiden Jameson has a lot to deal with and he's not quite sure which comes first. So, mm, delicious. Then we have Here We Are Monsters which is actually a lot smaller than I had expected it to be. And this is marketed as the Blair Witch Project meets Imaginary Girls. And I know that it has to do with a friend group and a girl goes missing and that kind of storyline, which I've read it before, but I have a feeling this is gonna take a much more of a dark and twisted turn on it. And it's just gonna be really messed up, which I'm kind of here for. Then we have Beasts of the Frozen Sun. And hello, can we just look at this gorgeous, gorgeous cover by Jill Cresswell? Oh my God, I cannot. It is beautiful. So I got to meet Jill Cresswell. She was really lovely and people were just freaking out for her book. She signed it for me. But it has to do with this girl, Lyra, and when this man washes up on the shore, she's supposed to just leave him be, but she ends up interacting with him and I think she brings him back to her clan and it's like all this taboo stuff that goes in between the two of them and this overarching war between the gods and the men and it just seems like it's going to be really intense high fantasy and I'm kind of here for it. The last August book I got was Rage by Cora Carmack. This is the sequel to Raw by her. I actually haven't read Raw, but I am a huge fan of Cora Carmack's Rust University series. So I want to line up and see her anyway and I got it signed and I got to chat with her and she's just one of my most favorite authors and she was just so sweet to me. So I'm really stoked to actually get to this series eventually. So now we have our September releases and first we're going to start off with one of my most anticipated September releases and that is Serpent and Dove. I was so lucky to get this. I was walking past the booth and I said to them, I was like, I know that you guys are giving away copies during BookCon, but I was wondering if you guys were going to be giving away any during BEA. And the woman said to me, this was at 10.30 a.m. She goes, actually, we're going to be doing a drop at 11 a.m. And I sat there and I was like, well, guess I'm not leaving. So I literally perched my butt on the floor and I waited for 30 minutes and I was at the front of the line to grab this and, oh, 
I am excited. Oh my god, look at this sticker that I just found in it that I grabbed. I must have just thrown it in there. <laughs> so this is about a girl who was part of a coven and then she flees the coven and she starts to live her life normally and then she falls in love with a huntsman who was meant to kill witches and it's that whole like huntsman witch romance going on and you know, plus this cover is just about your thiefful. Next up we have Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. I grabbed this because they were just handing out like so many of them and I've read Malcolm Gladwell's books before but my favorite teacher she is she adores Malcolm Gladwell's writing so I just picked this up pretty much to give my teacher <laughs> you know I'm a thoughtful student guys next we have There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Paul this is one of my most anticipated books to get and I kept missing all the art drops for it and I was getting really upset and I was with Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads and she so kindly told me that she was going to a Fierce Reads event, that this book would be there and that she would just give it to me because she's not the hugest fan of fantasy books and it actually is signed, which I didn't even realize until later on. And I'm so thankful that I got to meet Chelsea and hang out with her throughout the week because she was just so much fun and I had such a blast hanging out with her and I really miss her and just her personality and being around her was just so much fun and oh my God, just so many amazing people. and. Oh, oh my god, I just, I miss her. It's okay, it's okay. But this has five different point of views and it's about these five people who are kind of set in a collision course and how their lives kind of all intertwine and it has to do with like these old prophets that have gone missing and it's just very spooky ooky and oof, I'm just, I'm into it, I'm into it guys. Next up we have The Bone Houses, which, oh my god. I was so stoked to get this. I waited in line. As soon as I knew this was gonna be there, I was like, I need to get my hands on this. So it's about this girl who is a grave digger and ever since her parents died, she has been responsible for kind of keeping up with the business. However, in this town, the dead don't always stay dead. And one day this new guy comes into town and when he gets there, the dead start rising a lot more. They become a lot more volatile and Fierce, and the two of them kind of have to work together to see what's going on and it just sounds really cool really fun and we kind of get a little bit of a romance feeling in it next we have oh my god the tenth girl I tried so hard I missed the first drop for this and I was so upset I was like oh my god I really really want this so I ended up getting it I ended up getting it actually signed <gasps> I got to meet her. Sarah Faring is one of the most sweetest human beings I think I've ever met. Oh my God. I can't even, the second I walked up to her, she complimented my lipstick and we exchanged like lipstick details and talks and she was just so lovely. I, I cannot, like Sarah Faring was definitely one of those authors that was just a complete and utter, just sweetheart to talk to. And oh my God, she was just phenomenal and just gorgeous as well. Like, ah oh my God. But the 10th girl, Oh my god, this sounds so spooky and I'm so excited that it comes out in September because it's just going to be the perfect introduction to the spooky months. But it's pitched as a gothic psychological thriller, which, oh my god, yes. And so it's about this finishing school and our main character arrives there and she's told you know, make sure you don't like leave after dark or walk by yourself and things like that. And then as time goes on, that people start kind of getting possessed and things like that and it's just oopa duba spooky and I am just here for this and I'm so excited. I think this is gonna be a really big hit. Then we also have another thriller that I don't know much about and that is of course, The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I have only read one of Lisa Jewell's books and that was Watching You. I liked it a lot. It definitely is not one of her best works but I still love her writing style and the way that she just articulates everything. So when I knew that she had an arc going to be at Book Expo, I had to get my hands on it, but I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it, so no one tell me, but yes, that's kind of it. <laughs> Then we have The 10,000 Doors of January. So it's about this girl named January who lives with this man named Mr. Locke and when she comes across this book one day, her life kind of starts to change and all these like mysterious things kind of start to happen. But I'm definitely very intrigued by it. And then the last September release that we have is one that I have been really excited for and I was lucky to get my hands on two copies of it because I really want to give one for Chelsea and that is Unpregnant. So this is about a girl who finds out that she is pregnant and 
she is unable to get an abortion in her state so she has to travel to New Mexico and the only person who can take her is her ex-best friend as the two of them are going on this road trip together I feel like it's going to be a very important book and I'm here for the serious topics that it's really going to tackle and the way that it's kind of just going to hit me so yes now let's move on to the massive pile that is going to be my October releases we're going to start off with Cursed and this is a King Arthur retelling where instead the protagonist is the Lady of the Lake, which sounds awesome. That's kind of all I know about it as a King Arthur retelling. It's also coming out as a Netflix series, so. Then we have a very anticipated book and that is The Beautiful by Renee Ardier and this is a vampire book and that's kind of all I need to know about it to read it because, you know, we don't have enough vampire books anymore, which is kind of sad. We then have The Last True Poets of the Sea. I have no, I'm not gonna lie, I, I really don't actually know what this is about at all. I have it signed, it's not personalized, so when I finish this, I'll probably just pass it on to someone else. But I got it because I was over at Disney anyway, waiting to get a, what was I waiting to get? I was waiting to get my wristband for Rick Riordan and this was just there and I was like, you know what, I might as well get in the line because the line was ending. There was like four people left and still a huge stack of books and I was like, might as well. So I have no idea what this is about. When I met Rick Riordan, we actually got a arc of this book, which is called Elizabeth Webster and the Court of Uncommon Police. But doesn't she give you Nico D'Angelo vibes? That's what I'm kind of getting from it. But it says, welcome to Elizabeth Webster's world where the common laws of middle school torment her days and the uncommon laws of an even weirder realm govern her nights. Then we have I'm Not Dying With You Tonight, and it is about two girls who are thrown into this chaotic event that happens at a football game. Then we have Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. They were just handing out these arcs. Chelsea told me that I should really pick this up, and so I did. I've been really intrigued by Christina Lauren. I really want to read more of their books, even though I know nothing about it. Don't judge me. We then have Tarnished Other Stars, which is one of the first arcs I actually picked up. It is actually very heavy and it's beautiful. So you're probably thinking, Madison, you're not normally into these like sci-fi robotic books. No, I'm not, but I've heard some really great things about this and I'm actually quite intrigued by it. It's about a girl who has a mechanical heart and that whole anatomical aspect of it is just already intriguing to me. And the main character also provides illegal medical help to people and that's premise in its own is something that I really enjoy because I am a med student or going to be a med student so we then have a very exciting middle grade and that is the dragon warrior I got this because Steph over at Shut Up and Read really was excited for it and she was telling me about it and I was like you know what I want that too. It is inspired by Chinese mythology. This girl named Farron, who was part of the Jade Society, but ever since her father went missing, she's had to train in secret with her brother Alex, and when she comes across a demon and helps defeat it, she is then tasked with finding this island of immortals before the Lunar New Year, or else her and her brother will be punished or something like that. But it sounds really super cute, and I'm actually excited to read a middle grade Chinese mythology inspired book, and I just saw the word what you doing and I'm just here for that as well. The next book I got because I was lining up in Katie McGarry's signing line at BookCon and Charlotte Nicole Davies was also there and that is The Good Luck Girls. I'm so excited when I was actually in line we were given the books and then had to wait in line and the girls behind me already started reading it and they were flipping out like just the first couple of pages they were super into it so mm -hmm, I'm so excited. It's about these girls who are sold to a welcome house and are branded and cursed, and when one of them accidentally murders someone, they then have to escape and they risk everything, and it sounds awesome. It literally says on the front, Asta the protector, Violet the favorite, Tansy the medic, Mallow the fighter, and Clementine the catalyst. And then next I have middle grade that I'm so excited for. When I saw it was there, I flipped out. Like, I'm not even kidding you. I, like, I saw a man carrying it and I went up to him and I was like, where did you get this? Like, I need it. And that is the Dark Lord Clementine. Uh, yes. Who doesn't, like, yes. So it's about Clementine, who is the heir to become the new Dark Lord. However, her father has recently become like missing. So Clementine has to kind of take up her like role as the heiress to being Dark Lord and become the new Dark Lord. And yes, give me it now. Then we have, 
oh my god, move these books. We have my November releases, which I only have two of, which is kind of strange. I thought there'd be more November releases considering it's my birth month, but it's fine because one of those books is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nan. Come on guys, like I'm so excited to read this. I am just shaking in my boots. It is beautiful. Natasha, once again, one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met. I'm just so stoked to read this next installment in the Girls of Paper and Fire series because I adore that series. It is amazing and the book left off on a cliffhanger and I have to know what happens next because I was so mad at how it ended. So, yes. <laughs> Next we have Queen of the Conquered, and I said this girl who is the true heir to this island, but once colonizers came, she was kind of thrown out of her role, and now she's trying to fight for her role to the throne. And yes, exciting. Okay, so now we have my 2020 releases. I'm gonna start off with Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim. So it's about this girl named Amiya, and after she saves a man, he gives her a new identity, which allows her to go on this mission to seek revenge on the people who killed her family. However, she slowly starts to realize that this game that she's playing is a lot more dangerous than she had previously realized, and it's kind of that story. It has some gender bending in it, and I'm just, very excited. Then we have Reverie, which seems amazing. I've told it has some vibes of the magicians in it. And it's about this boy who is found half dead in a river and he has no memory or recollection of what happened. And there are all these people who are now claiming to be his friend and all these things that are happening around him. And he doesn't know who to trust, what's real, what's going on. And it's that kind of a story. And it sounds very interesting and creepy and mm. We then have The Gravity of Us, which is about a boy who wants to be a journalist and he is writing about the Ma, I think it's Mars, is the adventure that's going on at the moment. Yes, NASA mission to Mars. And his dad is chosen as one of the astronauts. But our main character, Cal, meets Leon, whose mum is also chosen for this Mars mission. And the two of them kind of start to get to know each other and they fall in love and it's just, a beautiful male male romance and I'm so excited to see how these two boys kind of deal with this difficulty. We then have Wicked As You Wish by Rin Shupeko which I'm so excited about. It is fairy tale esque and it's about these people who were banished from their land and ended up in Arizona where there's no magic and the prince is trying to keep his identity secret and his best friend is actually a spell breaker so she can negate magic and they all kind of have no hope for returning back to their home world but when hope sparks they set off on this adventure and yeah we then have throw like a girl which seems like such a cute and fun read guys so it's with this girl and she is a softball star and what happens is in order to get her spot back on the softball team after she punches someone she kind of has to prove herself and so she ends up helping this guy who is an, the injured quarterback. And so she decides to help him out and be his temporary replacement. And does that not sound like the perfect recipe for romance? It does. A Heart So Fears and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. I managed to actually meet her and so I have a signed copy. She was so lovely and I'm actually very excited for this sequel. I think I'm actually going to enjoy it a lot more. This is the perspective of Grey and the daughter of Kara Lim. The daughter of, is that what it is? So now that we've gone over the main releases, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the three books that I got and one of them my mum is actually currently reading and the other two my dad is currently reading. So first we have The Chain by Adrienne McKinty and if you guys would like to know, my mum is currently 10 pages in and she has bookmarked it with Japanese beauty papers. That is... That is what my mum does. And so this is so messed up and I'm so here for it. You know what I said when I got this book in my hands to the publicist, I go, oh, I love a good kidnapping. Who says that they love a good kidnapping? Ah, but it's about this chain where this woman, her child gets kidnapped and in order to get her, kid and in order to get her child back, she has to kidnap someone else's child, but she also has to get those parents to then kidnap another child. And it's a whole chain reaction of kidnappings that have to occur in order to get your own child back. And if that's not messed up, what is? We then have Angel Mage by Garth Nix and Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade. My dad loves both of these authors and I have not read either of these, but I wanted to get them both. 
They're both personalized. This is actually personalized to me, but it's fine. My dad is currently reading this. He had just started it the other day. He's 89 pages into it. And my dad just, I don't actually know, this must have actually come with one of my stuff, but it's just a random piece of paper. So that's what my dad does. But yes, I'm actually very excited for both of these too. And now we're going to get to my two most important books that I got during BEA and BookCon. I got these actually both during BEA and they're my favorite books. I'm going to treasure them with all my heart and I'm so excited to tell you guys about them after I turn my camera up because it is currently overheating. First, we had the book that I was super, super lucky to get and that is The Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. It was a complete mad rush on Wednesday morning to get this book, but I was lucky enough to, you know, have long legs and get to the proper spot in the line where I managed to get a copy and I then got it signed by her as well. And Leigh Bardugo is such an amazing woman to listen to, but I'm so excited for this book. It is very trauma driven. It is about a secret society based off of Yale and I'm just so excited for it. I oh, this is just gonna be phenomenal and I'm so excited to read this. This comes out in October. And then the number one book that I knew that I had to get, no matter what, even if I had to sell a kidney, Okay, I wouldn't have sold a kidney for this book. I would have just waited for it, but I really, I really needed this book. And that is Shadow Frost by Coco Ma. This is my, this is probably my most highly anticipated release of the year. And I got to actually meet Coco Ma, chat with her. She's just one of the most sweetest human beings. She did tell me that there are a lot of differences between the arc and the final copy, which is fine with me because I'm gonna get the final copy anyway. Like, <laughs> let's be real. But she wrote me a really sweet little message in here and oh my god, she gave me all these X's and O's and I adore her. But Shadow Frost follows this kingdom called Axaria and there is a darkness that's looming in it and there's this kind of demon and someone has to kill it or else it's going to, you know, be a problem, guys. Her main character, Astrin, is the crown princess and she finds out that she actually might be able to defeat this demon and so she goes out on this quest that no one has ever come back from. But as she goes on this hunt to find this demon and kill it, her and her friends uncover a plot that was to assassinate the princess, which is, you know, herself. And there's just a lot more that weaves into the story. Coco Ma is only 18 years old. She was born in 2000. She is the same age as my younger brother. She is just such a phenomenal human being. I'm so proud of her. Like, I don't know her that well, but I'm just such, I'm just in awe of her as a human being. She's just so phenomenal and just so sweet and amazing. And I adore just hanging out with her every day. Whenever I saw her, I'd be like, Coco, like, just, just remember my love for you. And so this is just, I'm so excited. When does this actually come out? Cause I know that I'm planning on reading this just like as soon as I get through Smutterplan, this is probably the first book I'm going to pick up. But um, when does this actually come out? So this comes out in October but I'm probably gonna read it way before then and just be screaming about it for months. But it's okay guys, because I have no shame in that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. Let me know if you guys got any similar books, if there are any of these that you think I should definitely prioritize first, not including like, you know, publication date, but just ones that, you, that you're really excited for or that you've also maybe already received an art for and read. Let me know if you have any of these arcs, maybe you wanna buddy read them with me. I'm open to pretty much anything. But I had such a blast at BA and BookCon. If you have not checked out my vlog, I will link it up here. And yes, if you guys enjoyed this video, Please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch, guys. Bye.